Hello folks, our topic for the video today is going to be prokaryotic cellular respiration. All right, you're gonna notice in the Blackboard shell I have also posted links to the Khan Academy. They've got some great material on cellular respiration and the basics of how cellular respiration works. But one thing I want you to keep in mind, that link to the Khan Academy talks about cellular respiration in eukaryotic cells. In microbiology, we're dealing with prokaryotic cells, all right? Prokaryotic cells do not have organelles, all right? I can't tell you how many times I have asked questions on tests about prokaryotic cellular respiration, and students go into great detail about the mitochondria. The mitochondria is where cellular respiration happens in eukaryotic cells, okay? So in terms of that, I may want you to be able to tell me some of the differences between what happens in a prokaryotic cell and what happens in a eukaryotic cell, all right? But one of the things that you need to remember Prokaryotic cells do not have mitochondria, okay? But they are able to generate ATP at a rate that is equivalent to that of eukaryotic cells with mitochondria, okay? So there are going to be some important cellular structures that um, are gonna come into play here. And I'm gonna draw this over here. And obviously this is not gonna be to scale okay because this is a huge bacteria here we've got our cell wall made up of peptidoglycan we've got our plasma membrane And with our prokaryotic cell, what we're going to talk about in terms of cellular respiration, we're talking about taking sugar, which the chemical equation for sugar is C6H12O6. And typically the sugar that we use for an example with cellular respiration is going to be glucose, okay? But cellular respiration plus oxygen because we're going to start out talking about aerobic cellular respiration and if we have oxygen involved it means it's aerobic cellular respiration one of the things that's unique about bacteria is that they can perform anaerobic cellular respiration as well meaning they don't have to have oxygen but typically what it, with that aerob anaerobic cellular respiration, there's another molecule there that is going to accept our electron at the very end of things, all right? But we've got sugar, we've got oxygen, and through a lot of chemical interactions, chemical reactions, we are going to end up with carbon dioxide, and water out of the process, all right? So keep in mind, this chemical uh, equation right here is not balanced, meaning we don't have the same number, for example, of carbons on this side as we do on that side. So to make this correct, we're gonna add some numbers in front. That's why those numbers are there, because in terms of chemical reactions, um, matter isn't created or destroyed, it's only transformed, okay? So if you start out with six carbons, you have to end up with six carbons, okay? And in terms of balancing that, then we've got 12 hydrogens here. So we've got, we put a six here. We've now got 12 hydrogens here. But we've also altered the number of oxygens by doing that, okay? So if we add another six in front of the oxygen here, that balances everything out, all right? In terms of prokaryotic cellular respiration, all right? There are going to be, essentially, 
the same steps that you learned with eukaryotic cellular respiration. All right? That means we're going to start out with glycolysis. So that glycolysis is going to be breaking apart the sugar. And in terms of glycolysis, just like in eukaryotic cells, glycolysis is going to occur without oxygen being present. In our prokaryotic cells, glycolysis is going to occur in the cytoplasm. All right. We are also going to have a Krebs cycle. You may see the Krebs cycle also referred to as the citric acid cycle. I'm fine with you referring to it either way, okay? Krebs refers to the scientist who actually described the process, so it's named after him. Citric acid is going to be one of the products that's produced as part of the citric acid cycle. So either one is correct, and we're going to talk a, in a little bit more detail about glycolysis and Krebs cycle in a bit, all right? But our Krebs cycle is going to also occur within the cytoplasm of our bacteria, all right? And then our last component associated with cellular respiration is going to be oxidative phosphorylation. Or the electron transport chain. And in terms of the electron transport chain, that electron transport chain is going to be localized within the plasma membrane of our bacteria. All right? So that last part of cellular respiration is going to occur at the bacterial plasma membrane. And we'll talk more in detail about the steps that go on there um, in the next couple videos. So what I'll do in the next video is I'm going to talk in a little more detail about glycolysis. Then I'll have another video that will talk a little more detail about the Krebs cycle. Then a final one that will talk about the electron transport chain in terms of prokaryotic cells. So thank you for your attention.